Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So if you're new here, my name is Andrea and I'm a music photographer based in London and I do videos mostly about that. For this video, I thought that I would talk a little bit about why I feel like black and white photography is so special and what are the things that make it so different and so unique compared to color photography and talk a little bit about its peculiarities and quirks basically, like the little things that make it so special, maybe things that you didn't really know. Basically a video about some of the most interesting aspects of working with black and white and how different it can be to color and how unexpected certain things can be. Before I get into the video, just wanted to remind you guys to please like or dislike the video if you decided. And to subscribe if you want to see more videos because it basically just helps the channel reach more people. So subscribe if you want to and all of that. So if you are familiar with my work, you know that I'm obsessed with black and white and I mostly work with black and white. Maybe a year or so ago, I started to work with color and it's actually been very interesting because I've learned a lot about black and white after starting to work with color, they are very connected and I'm gonna explain some of the reasons why in this video. But if you would like to see a video of me talking about that sort of transition from working strictly with black and white to also working with color and the things that I've noticed and learned in doing so, let me know down below in the comments. I would love to make a video about it. So let me know if you'd be interested. I just want to start off by saying how interesting and strongly connected that relationship between shooting black and white and shooting color actually is because a lot of the ways that you capture black and white is dependent on the color hopefully it's gonna make more sense as i go into the videos and into the reasoning behind that i know it sounds kind of strange when i say it at least to me it sounds a little bit weird but hopefully it will make sense i'm just gonna give you like a very quick overview of why i personally love black and white and then i'm gonna go into what makes it so special universally as well so as we all know black and white is the OG. Photography only existed in black and white for many many years. I think if I'm not mistaken color photography came around a hundred years after photography was invented. When it was invented it was only black and white. So I think it's very natural to associate so much iconicity, is that a word? Being iconic? Iconicity? It is very natural to associate this grandness to the aesthetic of black and white. It's quite visually nostalgic for that reason as well. And as a very nostalgic person, I think that played a big part in my draw towards black and white. I've also always liked the way that photos look like printed on paper, that textured look. And a lot of the times those photos would be printed in black and white, whether it be at a newspaper or like an old magazine that I got my hands on. One of the big reasons why that still happens to this day is that it is also cheaper to print in black and white. When you print something in color, you need four different ink colors at least to make that color happen and with black and white you only need black and it's more accessible so I had a lot of contact with black and white images on paper and that was always my main source of inspiration aesthetically. I mean, if you know my work, I, I guess you can see how that would make sense. One of the most interesting things that I've learned or noticed when I started to exclusively work with black and white is how much it clashes with your natural visual instinct, how you naturally see things. So it definitely takes a bit of getting used to. A lot of factors that you would usually focus on when shooting in color take a total backseat when you're shooting black and white. One of the most noticeable ones to me, visible colors, colors in general become a hue. And what I mean by that, I don't know if, if, if hue is the correct term, but what I mean by that is that when you shoot in black and white, I feel like you start caring a little bit more about the general family a color is in as opposed to that color individually. For example, warm colors will always look kind of similar when shooting black and white, as will blue colors. A lot of the times, yellows and reds and pinks are interchangeable. They don't really make a difference when you shoot them in black and white. Same thing goes to maybe greens and blues and maybe purples. I guess purple is a little bit in between a warm and a cool tone because purples are kind of similar to reds, but it all kind of goes down to the warmth of a color. That's like the, the thing that matters the most. For example, in this shot right now, the sofa, which is red in my pink coat, would look very, very similar, if not identical on a photograph. Even though in color, you can clearly tell they're different colors. When you shoot them black and white, they will look like they would be the same color, if that makes sense. 
so they could be interchangeable pretty much and that and that's very interesting for example when you work with stylists and wardrobe and clothes in general it can actually give you a lot of freedom a lot of leniency and flexibility let's say that a stylist found this really cool outfit but it totally doesn't match you know they have like a dark orange coat on and like red pants in black and white they could match beautifully. So it really gives you a bit more of flexibility when it comes to working with colors. So when you shoot in black and white, you can and you should start thinking of colors as a family of colors. So I think that really helps when you're trying to set a scene. And I think for the most part, it really is to your advantage as a photographer, even as a, as a stylist as well. If you, I don't know, does that happen with stylists? Do they get to work only with black and white photos? I don't know. Another way that shooting black and white is different to shooting color is that saturation becomes contrast a lot of the times when i'm editing a photo if i want to make a photo more contrasted but only like in the right places only where there would be color for example you would mess around with the saturation as opposed to the contrast and that would give you a select contrast and select parts of the photos let me know if this is a bit too technical if it's kind of hard to imagine it when i try to explain it but i hope that you can still kind of understand what i mean I, I let me know like I was saying a lot of the times when I want to make something in a photo something specific in a photo more contrasted I will bring red into it so let's say I want to make someone's face more contrasted I'll add more red to their face or if I want to make their clothes more contrasted on the top or something I'll see if I can add an item of clothing in the warm family of colors so like red or pink or orange or anything along those lines and let's say I want to make the setting darker I would add something <laughs> some red prop to it and that would make it darken that specific area so you can really target contrast and light and darkness through colors when you're shooting in black and white so generally the more warmth in a picture the darker it will be um, obviously that can depend a little bit on how you edit your photos from black and white to color but I think as a general rule that's sort of how it goes also this plant is petting my head in the whole video but it is what it is. it's growing so much a very good example to this is when you take the Addams Family the TV show was it a TV show or a movie? I think it was a TV show everything that you see from it is in black and white but if you look at the set for it half of it is all pink or in warm tones and it looks a little bit crazy but it had a very definite purpose the living room was all expertly decorated in shades of pinks and reds and that's how they achieved a lot of the contrast and all the levels in their shots for example i can try and show you right now so i'm wearing this pink coat so like a warm tone coat i'm gonna edit this clip into black and white and then add that same effect i'm not going to change anything about it it's going to be the same the black and white effect that i'm going to put on this clip i'm going to put on a clip of me wearing a green coat so a more cool color so you can kind of see how different those colors express themselves in black and white let me go grab that so to be fair i could have chosen a green that was a little bit more saturated so that you could see the difference a little bit better but the analogy still stands it would still perform in a similar way so i'm gonna add the filter <laughs> it looks so disheveled so i'm gonna add that same filter that i used when i had the pink coat on to this clip so that you can see how differently the colors look yeah hopefully that helps explain it a little bit but i'm gonna go ahead and put the pink coat back on because i like so in summary red becomes black but it becomes a more flexible black it becomes a black that you can control you can adjust how dark you want it to be and that's something very special because you can basically adjust all the levels of all the warmth in a photo you have this magic ability to adjust the levels with way more flexibility than you would be able to if it was in color let me know if you understand what i mean and let me know if you if i need to try and explain it better and i'm so sorry about the sun <laughs> i don't really know what to do about this maybe i can move a little bit here kind of touching on what i was saying a little bit before this when shooting in black and white matching your colors have never been less important it's now time to focus on textures shapes and patterns it takes a whole readjusting of the approach that a person has to photography i feel like a lot of people's initial draw to a photograph and i mean this visually not necessarily conceptually but i feel like 
people's initial draw to a photograph is the color in itself. And I feel like that's because it's such an easy thing for your brain to pick out when it looks at it, for it to like notice and label and like categorize in your mind. When you take color out of the picture, literally, your brain is forced to look more into that photo to find links and connections and meaning. I feel like it basically forces your brain to see that image with a new perspective, almost like with new eyes, because it isn't able to draw the same connections it does to when it looks at real life, which has color in it. So it forces your brain to analyze it and conceptualize it in a way that's different to the way it sees real life. So I feel like it's, it's just like a special connection or transaction with that black and white photo. So what I'm trying to say basically is that when you look at a black and white photo, at least this happens with me, your brain or my brain is forced to notice different elements first than it normally would. For example, when I look at a black and white photo, I feel like the first things that I notice are the shapes in it, whether it be, you know, architecture or a silhouette or any sort of subject or item or object. That's the thing that I take in first as opposed to color, which I think is what I would take in first if I looked at a colored image. I'll be like, oh, there's a red vase. And when I look at a black and white photo, it's like, oh, there's a vase. Like that's the vase is the first thing that comes to my mind. And I feel like that does something to the way you take in an image. So to sort of summarize this video, I guess, I feel like shooting in black and white offer those who interact with the image a different approach when it comes to taking it in, whether they realize it or not. I think for a long time, I never realized that I did this until I really start thinking about it and reflecting about it. I never really noticed it. And I think one of the reasons why that happens is that it offers such a clear separation from the art to real life because we don't see real life in black and white. We see it in color. And when we're faced with a black and white photo, it really forces your brain to separate that image from reality and it gives it a more special and a thorough feel to it. I don't know, it's just so, it feels so different. And a lot of the times people ask me why I work with black and white. And I've always been trying to find different ways to explain it because there are the obvious ways to explain it. You know, it's like, oh, it's more bold, it's more contrasted, and those things are all true and all valid. But I also think there's a more cognitive separation in the way that you take those images in when they are in black and white. So yeah, I mean, let me know what you thought about the things that I said. If you also share some similar feelings towards black and white, or if you think something that I said is really not how you see things, or just let me know what you thought of the video, what you thought of the topic, what you would like to see next. And don't forget to like and subscribe and yeah. I'll see you guys very soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>